one point of time at a time. But in that realm, it was like all of time was happening all at once. And the analogy that I like to use to help me to explain this is I want you to imagine that there's a tapestry, a huge tapestry, let's say as big as this wall behind me. So let's say this tapestry is from floor to ceiling and from end to end, this back wall. So there's this huge mural, like a big <coughs> picture, and it's a complex picture, complex tapestry, where you can see trees and waterfalls and rainbows and mountains, and you can, as you get closer, you can see birds and butterflies, and you can see flowers, and the closer you get, you can see little portions of it. Now, if you stand at the back of the room, you can see the whole tapestry, the big tapestry, you can see the whole thing. You can imagine that, right? But as you get closer and closer, now imagine if you get really close, you don't see the whole thing anymore, you're just focusing on a little part of it. Now imagine you get so close that your nose is almost touching the tapestry, and you realize that this tapestry is made up of fine threads, silk threads of all different colors, woven together to create this beautiful tapestry, this beautiful and intricate tapestry. Now imagine that as you look at these silk threads, and you home in on one thread, and you realize, oh my gosh, that one thread is the trajectory of my life. My life is one thread of a tapestry. And as you follow that one thread, you can see where it's touched all the other threads, and where all those threads have gone on to touch other threads, and you can see where that thread has yet to go forward and touch more threads, which will then go on and touch other threads. Now imagine if while you are living your physical life as one point of time at a time, you can't see the whole of that tapestry. So imagine one point of that thread, or even that thread, cannot imagine that it's part of this beautiful big tapestry. Yet it's such an intricate part of the tapestry. Because if you were to remove that thread, think of all the other threads that it's touched that would not be touched by that anymore, and the other threads they've gone on to touch. This is what happens if you remove even one person. If one person doesn't exist, it affects the whole tapestry. So as I follow the thread that was my life, I could see in my past how everything I had done and how it had impacted people and how things other people had done had impacted me and how it had affected what I had gone on to do as I followed this one thread in the tapestry. I could see how even my running away from marriage, which at that time I thought was a terrible thing I did, which I felt guilty and awful for, I saw how it had actually inspired other younger women to stand up and speak out against having the same, having an arranged marriage. It gave them courage to speak out in situations which they wouldn't have done had I not done what I'd done. Which means that sometimes, even things that we think are really bad or wrong that happen to us, maybe it's for the best. Maybe you've done something that's inspired other people. In the grand tapestry, it's still perfect. And I could see in this tapestry where I still had yet to go, but I had not come to those parts yet. And I realized how being outside of the physical body allows me to view the whole tapestry. When we're in the physical body, it doesn't make sense, but when you're outside the physical body, you see the big picture, and then you realize, ah, life suddenly makes sense, and it's perfect. It's actually perfect, the way everything is woven together. It was around that point that I felt my dad 
was telling me that I needed to go back. He said I'd reached a point where if I went any further, I wouldn't be able to turn back. But I didn't want to turn back because my body was dying, my body was sick, my family was suffering, I was suffering. No part of me wanted to turn back. I wanted to stay there, of course, where the, all the unconditional love was and it was so amazing and I felt so free and light and I felt so powerful and uh, it, there was no part of me that wanted to go back. But my dad started to tell me that I hadn't completed my purpose yet. He told me that my purpose and my husband's purpose was linked. Danny and my purpose was linked. And if I didn't go back, that he wouldn't be able to complete his purpose. And it was like, as though, because I understood the tapestry, I realized if I didn't go back, then the tapestry would be incomplete because that part of the thread would be missing. But I still couldn't understand what good was I going to be in the condition that I was in. And it was in that moment that I felt that I hit this state of clarity where I felt I understood how every choice and every decision that I had made in my life up to that point led me to that moment where I was lying in that hospital bed dying. I understood why I had cancer. I understood how it was that spending a lifetime of living from a place of fear, making every choice out of fear, making every choice from a place of forsaking myself and dimming my own light and putting myself last and treating myself like a doormat, I realized how doing that every step of the way had depleted me to the point I'd got cancer. And I'd never allowed my own light to shine through. And I understood how all those choices and decisions led me to be lying there on that hospital bed dying. And I felt it was at that moment that my dad and my best friend said to me that now that you know the truth of who you really are, go back and live your life fearlessly. And it was in that moment that I realized that now that I knew the truth, of what caused my cancer and who I am, that if I did choose to come back, my body would heal very, very quickly. And it was in those moments that I started to open my eyes and come out of the coma. And as I started to come out of the coma, I saw my family standing around me.